Hey everyone, another self-isolation bonus video where we take a look at the past, those commands from the early days of Pro Engineer back in the 1980s, 1990s that have been obsoleted with good reason. And today we're going to take a look at the general blend command. We took a look at general blend in another video, but in that one I selected sections. In this one, I'm going to sketch the sections. Uh, before I do that though, just a reminder, if you want to see these different commands in the interface or be able to access them, you have to go to your config options. And the one for these is enable obsoleted features, set that to yes, and then you'll be able to use the command search in the upper right hand corner to access the commands or you could customize your interface if you want to add them to the common tab. Okay, so here I have the general blend command. Back in the day when you were creating one of these features, you had to say up front what you wanted, whether it was going to be a protrusion to add material, a cut to remove material, a surface to create a non-solid feature. If you wanted to have a wall thickness, it was a thin protrusion and a thin cut. The disadvantage to that, of course, is a protrusion was always a protrusion. If you needed to change your design attempt later on, you couldn't do that. But anyhow, let's do a protrusion. And in the previous video, I selected sections. In this one, I am going to sketch my different sections to show you what is different about the general blend feature. The general blend feature does something that no other features in Creo Parametric can do. The thing is, I'm just not sure that's something that's needed. So anyhow, we're gonna sketch our different sections. I'll click done. And now it's asking me for the attribute. Do I want it to be straight or smooth? I'm going to do a straight one. So in other words, I'm going to have the different sketches or sections in the blend connected with straight lines. So let's click done out of there. Now we're prompted to select our sketch plane. I am going to sketch on this surface over here. This is a good direction for creating the feature. I will click OK. And then for the orientation of this, uh, let's choose to face, I don't know, let me turn on my plane visibility. This is how you had to do things back in the day. I can choose, let's see, let's choose to face the right side of the screen, the datum plane called right. Again, it's a lot more automated now where Creo Parametric will suggest references to you. And for sketching the different sections to show you the complexity of this feature, I'm going to make all the sections the same uh, dimensions to show you what, what actually changes about it. I'm, and oops, I'm actually going to make it the same dimensions as the extrude that I have in the model because you'll see in a moment we're going to have a tangency option uh, that we can select later on. And on one of the vertices, you'll notice that there is an arrow. That arrow indicates the start point. And so it's how you figure out how to line up the vertices in the various different sections. If you want to change the start point, select another vertex, right mouse click and hold and choose start point and it changes. One thing I want to point out, notice in the first section there's an arrow. I'll get to that in a moment. Another thing that is required in here is a sketch coordinate system. And I'm going to drop it right in the middle. So every section has to have a sketch coordinate system. So that is good for my first section. Let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And here's what's different about the general blend. You can have an angle of rotation of up to plus or minus 120 degrees about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis of that sketch coordinate system that we put into the sketch. So let's do 45 degrees about x. And I'm just going to do x and then separately, y separately, z separately, just to show you what it does, because it can be you know, kind of confusing if I were to do multiple angles in the same one. So let's do 45 about x, 0 about y, 0 about z. And then again, we get thrown into sketch mode. Let's drop in our sketch or coordinate system there. And I'm going to sketch a center rectangle again. I'm just going to use those same dimensions. Let's change this to a value of 8. Let's change this to a value of 12. 
let's use the right mouse button to get out of sketch mode and now it asks me if I want to continue to the next section yeah let's put in one more section uh, for now and then I'll do a preview so I'll say yes and again I'm gonna rotate just about X again to show you this and then let's do zero about Y zero about Z let's drop in our sketcher coordinate system again just doing a simple set center rectangle so that you can see the effect of this feature let's change this to 8 change this to 12 and right mouse button to get to the check mark and let's say no for now then we're being asked the depth to section 2 so what this general blend is doing is it's translating about the Z direction of your sketcher coordinate system and allowing you to rotate about X Y and Z up to plus or minus 180 degrees let's put a distance of 20 to section 2 let's also do 20 to section 3 and at this point I can click the preview button and so you see what we're getting here it's going up and then the actual sketch plane well, let's click the OK button for now uh, and I'll just do an edit dimensions so you can see where the different sections are so again it translates about Z then it's going to rotate about that angle that you specify and create your sketch on that new plane and then again with our next section it translates and creates the feature over there uh, so you see what's going on there let's do a bunch more sections and I hope this doesn't get redundant but let's edit definition and go to the section option over here let's add another section I want this new section to be section 4 I'm actually not gonna rotate about anything this time I'm just going to translate it so let's do our sketcher coordinate system and then center rectangle and since I'm using the same sketch in all these I'm just gonna start speeding through uh, in the video whenever I get into sketch mode just so that you know you're probably never gonna use this feature probably already bored all right let's hit the check mark over here depth for section 4 I'm just gonna keep on using the same depth in there all right let's click done out of here and then click OK out of there oops so there I have the start point wrong I did not intend to do that but it's a good uh, way to show you why getting the start point wrong is so easy so let's modify section four and right now the start points over here remember how we had the arrow on the start point in the first section now it's just a little circle over there that's why it's so easy to miss and that used to be the same way in sweeps back in the day and then they added the big obvious arrow in there wait was it sweeps no it just blends or something but anyhow let's change the start point let's right mouse and get out of sketch mode and hit the preview button uh, let me hit done out of here see again back in the day you really had to do things in a precise order uh, in there all right so this is good uh, let me now uh, I'm gonna add in another section and let's see what the effect of a y-axis rotation is so let me go to section over here let's add in a new section it'll be the last section I'm going to do zero about X let's do 45 about Y and zero about Z all right depth of the next section again I'm just keeping the same numbers over and over again so that you can see the effect now we'll do preview so again you see what happens is it translates to the 20 and now we're rotating about Y let's add in another section All right, so there we have the other section. Okay, this time I'm going to add in another section, and this time we're going to rotate about Z. All right, there we have it. Let's hit the preview button over here, and it could not construct the feature geometry. Hold on, let me try to change something. 
Okay, yeah, once again, I had gotten the start point wrong. Really hard for me to remember that stuff. And so here you see with rotating about Z, it's like I was doing this with the start point going in the wrong direction. Okay, so that's the effect of rotating about Z. I'm going to do one more section just to show you that the final section can be a single point. All right, so yeah, that's that's what we have there for the general blend. So again, you can see again, rotate, translate. Now let's change this to smooth. I'll double click on the attributes, go from straight to smooth and hit the done button. Okay, there we have the tangency option. Let me hit preview out of here. So there you can see the geometry that we are getting in this particular case. And you see what the interpolation between the different sections. It looks really weird down here. So let's go to tangency. Should it be tangent to any surfaces at the uh, first end? We'll say yes. And so it highlights an edge. What do you want that edge to be tangent to? So we're just going around the loop here. Use a little query select to get to that one and that one over there. Should it be tangent at the other end? Let's click the no button and then preview. And so there you can see it looks a little nicer in there. And that is your general blend with sketched sections. You know, there was a long time where I thought, ah, you know, maybe PTC shouldn't have hidden that in the interface. Now the more I think about it, it's like, eh, you know, what would you use this for? So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are staying home. I hope you are staying healthy. I hope you are staying safe. Thanks to our first responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, our police officers. Thanks to all the people working in grocery stores. Thanks to all the people who are growing our food or making our food and getting the food to the stores and thanks to our doctors, nurses, and everyone working in hospitals to get us through this crisis.